Hey guys, it's Damp. Uh, I know it's been a long time since I've done a video. Uh, most of that happens to be because of uh, the tackle shop and the businesses that I have and all that stuff taking up so much of my time now. Um, however, I do still want to try and make content for you guys when I can, when I get time. So I thought this one was relevant. It's been a long time since you know I've done an, uh, an RF4 video. So I thought I'd do one to kind of walk you through the intro of the new map, the Norwegian Sea. Uh, so I'll kind of get right into it. The Norwegian Sea is a level 34 map. So with a level 34 map, you can also come here using like a charter uh, service, I guess I would say, which costs 0.95 gold or just over 1300-ish silver, where you can come here for five days and you take... You basically rent gear from, I'll show you what that looks like. So it's five in-game days. Uh, it includes a fishing boat for the five days, which would cost you approximately probably 450-ish uh, silver, somewhere around that, 425 silver, just by itself. You, you get all the tackle and gear for sea fishing, and if you break anything, it gets replaced. So 0.95 silver, 1395 silver, 0.95 gold, sorry. Um, every player can do it. So if you're not level 34, you can still do it. Uh, and what it allows you to do is get these new skill points. Even if you're not level 34, you get points into the marine fishing category, which is a new category that includes using new rigs that are added to the game just for the Norwegian Sea map. So, uh, that's a great way to do it now previously you couldn't be level 34 above and use that pass i believe that's been changed now so uh it's a good way to kind of gain skill you aren't going to gain a ton of money unless you happen to get lucky with the cafe orders so you're not going to make a ton of money but you do get quite a bit of experience relatively speaking as well as you're going to get the marine skills and you're not damaging your gear. The biggest problem I have with the new map is the amount of gear damage you do take from fish that don't ne are not necessarily worth it. I'm looking at you, Halibut. Uh, so, generally speaking, this map, it's, it's really well designed. There's a lot of cool new rigs and stuff that you can use. In North America, it, the style is similar to what you would use in the Northeast uh, with diamond jigs. Or it's somewhat similar to even slow pitch jigging that you do, uh, which is now being popular all over North America. It's been popular uh, over in Asia for a long time, but it, it's now coming over here. Um, you still can shore fish, like you just saw me shore fish over there. However, by using your gear, you are not going to gain marine skill points. So if you're using like the gear you would, uh, if you're not using a boat rod or you're not using a pilka rod, you will not gain marine xp you can get money but you won't and you'll gain regular xp but you not will not gain marine skill fishing points if that makes sense so i'll kind of show you around a little bit uh give you a brief overview of the map and just some kind of basic spots that i can give you and without like completely overwhelming you so one of the things you'll notice on this new map is it's pretty spread out um I'll show you just the shore spots that are typically most popular that I'm aware of right now that I know do tend to be productive. So the first one would be right here over in this general area. It's like 35, 514, some, somewhere around that, I think, are the coordinates. And then also right behind the workshop, which I was going to show you, uh, is another spot that's pretty popular. Keep in mind with a pilka rod, you're not really going to be able to cast far enough to get a lot of marine skill points. Um right away maybe later when you get some of the higher end stuff but uh, a boat rod will allow you to cast far enough for sure um, especially depending on the type you get and then you can gain marine skill points from shore it's kind of difficult to get them with a pilka rod because you just don't cast far enough um, so if uh, we take a look at some of the other spots as far as ones that require a boat pass the first thing you'll notice is the boat passes are pretty expensive and over the last few days, there's been a lot of players who feel, I think, that uh, it hasn't been worth it to go out on a boat unless you know a spot's going to be really good because you're paying basically $100 an hour or 100 silver an hour. Uh, the five-day pass is 400 so you save a little bit there. 
Uh, still, it's difficult to go out fishing without carrying an additional boat pass. Uh, just to give you an idea, guys, I, I found personally that I seem to get hooked up on much bigger fish when my boat pass is about to expire. So I would tell you the first piece of advice is always buy an extra one-day pass just in case you're fighting a fish that's worth it. Um, the cafe orders you'll see are relatively lucrative, where most of them start around 70. They go up from there. Um, there's some fairly easy ones that pop up, like Sculpin. You can catch those from shore pretty readily and be able to complete those. That one's worth probably 60 or 70 silver around in there. But you also have to remember that you're going to be taking some damage to gear that is pretty significant. So my advice would be to stick with some smaller hooks when you first get into the game, probably between 3 ot and 6 ot, especially if you don't have great gear. Uh, the other part that you want to consider is you know how durable is your gear. It may be better off when you first start. I didn't do the boat pass for five days, the charter type trip, but I would have had it would it been available to me at the time before I went and bought my rods and reels and everything. I would have just done the boat pass to avoid the gear damage because I did take quite a bit on the cardinal. Um, so with that, here's the bait shop. The bait shop, you'll see all these new baits. Uh, I mean, I, I wouldn't really be concerned with any of these new gold baits. You're going to be able to cut up all this stuff, so don't waste your money buying any of this. This stuff will come. You'll be able to buy... You'll be cutting these fish up in no time. And um, pretty much a waste of money for any of that. Uh, the ones you're going to be using the most from shore are going to be the shrimp. That I believe this is a sandworm, or I think you guys call them DK worms in the EU. Uh, so, something like that. Ragworms, maybe. Anyway... And then lugworms, which is a Chinese worm, I believe, in, in my bait industry, we get those from China, or they're imported from China. Really gross things that basically replace our bloodworms, because our bloodworms have become so expensive over here that come from, like, Maine and uh, the Northeast. Um, so, yeah, I have not fished the mussel meat, scallop meat, squid meat. If you have gold bait left over from the freshwater one, I do know that crab works pretty well from shore if you wanted to try that. I haven't had a lot of success with using the freshwater bait in the salt water, just because I'm sure that question would come up. But these work all pretty well. I think the lugworm and the sandworm work a little better than the shrimp, in my opinion. When you're fishing from this shore spot over here, which is typically either right off the dock here or off the rocks over in this general direction, and I basically cast full cast or 50 meter clip. So if you just want to start in the map without, you know, going balls deep into getting the, uh, boat passes and stuff and a pilka rod you can fish from shore and make a decent amount of money while you semi afk or whatever one thing while we're on that topic the boat rods are not fished like feeder rods in the in this expansion or whatever i think people originally thought that i think there's been a few people who have bought some of those and unfortunately they bought like a handful of them thinking they could fish three at a time you can't so don't do that um when you're you're starting off, you can't buy a boat rod and use it. You have to be at level 55 to use a boat rod. That's just to use the light boat rod. So keep that in mind. You have to start off pretty much with a pilka rod unless you rent gear until you get to 55, like you do the rental trip until you get to the skill of 55. Um, so with all that being said, uh, I'll show you a few other changes that are relative if you're kind of new here and you're looking to buy a reel, you really want to watch out for making sure that your reels are salt water. So on the new reels, you'll or on the new symbols for the reels, you'll notice there's a new symbol here that says salt water resistant. Uh, although I am still using some freshwater gear on my feeder rods, um, I do notice they take a little bit more wear. I'm not sure how bad it is. Uh, there are some replacement ball bearings that you can buy for certain reels. My reels weren't eligible for that. So keep that in mind is you don't necessarily have to go out and buy a new reel. It just depends on the your particular reel. So you may be able to find it. But what I would tell you is generally speaking, you're going to be fighting fish from probably uncommonly. They're 4 to 10 kilograms. Um, rarely you'll get some 15 pluses. And God forbid you get halibuts or something big like that. It, you know, 
Even with a Venga, I struggle. Even with the Cardinal, uh, which is the 22 speed, I struggle. So keep in mind that if you're using really big hooks, you're asking for trouble. Really big hooks and fillet rigs seem to be the ones that are asking for the most halibut. Maybe you enjoy catching them, but they're basically this map's catfish with Sculpin being this map's perch. Um, one thing that's good is you don't catch a lot of unchecked mark fish. So that is good. On this map, I don't seem to catch a lot of unchecked mark fish for sure. So without going into too much detail, a lot of people want to know what rod I thought was the best value. So I, I really do think the Ocean Queens for the Pilker rod is the best value if you want to fish heavier tackle. And then if you're looking for experience, there's a lot of other options you could look into like the Jig and Pilker rod um, or the Sensei, which are you know they're not very heavy so if you're gonna fish deeper water keep in mind you're gonna be fishing jigs up to a thousand um a thousand grams so if you get one of these light jigs and, or light rods and you want to fish deeper water it's going to take you a long time to get down to the bottom which are where most of the fish are caught on this new map is somewhere down on the bottom in the vast majority of the better spots so when you're making that decision, you really want to consider how much weight, how heavy of a bait or a lure that you can put on there because you want to get down fast to be as efficient as possible. So without going into too much detail of every, everything else in the map, I'll just show you guys, generally speaking, some spots that have produced for me. Um, and it seems like commonly they're producing for a lot of people. So the 41 meter hole, particularly in and around C9, I think is a pretty good one. Um, the edges of most of these other holes... So like you have the 55 meter hole, you have the edges where the bottom contour tends to change. I find those to be pretty productive as well. Same thing for the 75 meter and the 80 meter hole. I find that those are doing pretty well. I Again, I try to stick around the edges, not right down the middle of the, um, of the map. Uh, the, I typically like to fish the 150 meter hole here lately, the last week or so about 25 to 35 feet deep in the 115 meter hole. I've caught quite a few mackerel there. So there are quite a few options as far as places to fish. There are going to be a lot of times where you just can't find them. And I don't want to say a lot, but there's been a fair amount of times where I've gone in and been like, oh, I can't catch anything in my happy hour. I catch three fish, four fish, skunk city. So that does happen. I don't find that these spots are as particular as like, carp fishing which is a big win i think for the game so in other words you don't have to have this pva with this bait and this boily and this corn and this line and this leader this map doesn't seem to be nearly as particular in order to catch fish but that probably has to do with it being such a wide variety of fish that are here so another thing to keep in mind is when you get on the boat and i won't you know waste all the time going over to the boat and showing you guys all that stuff but when you do go to the boat and you're going to have your fish finder, that fish finder does work. It's not just aesthetic. So if you, you can actually fish backwards, look at your fish finder and jig. And by doing that, if you're in that depth range, I would tell you to try and get a few feet above of where the fish are on the fish finder. And that is typically the best place to target if you can do that. Um, the vast majority of the fish I catch, probably 65 to 70 percent, are caught right above the bottom. So you drop your bait to the bottom where it says uh, movement. You reel it out of that, and then you just start jigging um, just by right clicking. And by repeatedly right clicking in a rhythm, you'll get perking. And I feel that's probably one of the best ways to do it. You actually don't need to jig at all. Occasionally, just by leaving your bait there, it'll get picked up. Um, you probably want to spam R quite a bit as you're dropping your jig from the boat. And the reason for that is a lot of times uh, fish will pick up your bait as you're dropping it when it's on the drop. So you want to be aware of that. Um, really, that's as fast as I could give you an under 15 minute video, y'all, with some general basic starting tips on things to do and what to try when you're here. Um, I'm sure Mr. Crossy will be working on some more content for you guys on this map. I just wanted to put out something basic. It's been so long since I've talked to you guys, and I know many of you are here just for the fishing content. So um, I think those would help you kind of get started. 
Obviously, I have my Twitch stream. You could come in and ask any questions. I'm, I'm still streaming sometimes two, sometimes five days a week. It just depends on um, my schedule at the Tackle Shop IRL. So uh, hopefully this helped you. Um, if you guys have any tips or anything for uh, any other anglers that are playing RF4, put them in the comments for me, and I'll see you guys sooner. Hopefully not a year. Sorry. See y'all.